Imagine for a moment that everything around you isn't real, that what you perceive as reality is just a highly sophisticated simulation. It's a chilling thought, isn't it? The idea that every sight, every sound, every touch, taste and smell is nothing more than a clever illusion, a digital mirage designed to fool our senses. Before you decide to discount everything that you just heard, I should tell you that this isn't just some high concept science fiction trope, it's a serious philosophical proposition. And it's been the subject of heated debates among scientists, philosophers and scholars for years now. Let's take a step back and consider our own understanding of reality. Allow me to ask you a simple question. What tools do you use to help you process everything that goes on in the world? If your answer is hammer and a nail, you are absolutely not right. We perceive the world around us through our senses, but these senses can be fooled. Optical illusions, for instance, make us see things that aren't really there. So if our senses can be fooled by simple tricks of light and shadow, who's to say they couldn't be fooled by something far more sophisticated, a simulation so advanced, so intricate, that it's indistinguishable from the real thing? Now you might be thinking, this sounds a lot like that movie, the one with the guy in the black trench coat and the sunglasses dodging bullets in slow motion. And you wouldn't be wrong. The premise is similar, but the simulation hypothesis isn't just some Hollywood fantasy. It's a genuine scientific theory, one that's being taken seriously by some of the brightest minds in the world. The simulation hypothesis proposes that we, and everything we know, are part of an advanced digital simulation, that our entire universe is nothing more than lines of complex computer code running on some unfathomably powerful supercomputer. It's a concept that challenges everything we think we know about existence, about reality, about ourselves. Now, this might sound like the stuff of science fiction, but it's not. It's not just plausible, it's possible. It's a theory that's being actively explored and tested by scientists and researchers all over the world. So here's the unsettling truth. We might be living in a simulation, and if we are, what does that mean for us? What does it mean for our understanding of reality, of existence, of ourselves? What if I told you this isn't as far-fetched as it sounds? The simulation hypothesis suggests that our world is not real, but an artificial construct. Some of you may have heard of this idea before, but for those who haven't, let's break it down. The simulation hypothesis proposes that everything we perceive, everything we experience, from the vast expanse of the universe to the tiniest particles of matter, is nothing more than an elaborate simulation. You might ask, a simulation like a video game? And in a way, yes, exactly like a video game. Think about it. In your favorite video game, you navigate through a digitally created world. You interact with characters that are programmed to behave in certain ways. You follow a storyline that has been predetermined by the game designers. And all of this happens within the confines of your computer or game console. Even though the game world feels real while you're immersed in it, it's not. It's a construct, a meticulously crafted illusion. Now, imagine that our universe is a similar kind of construct. We're not just talking about a digital realm confined to a screen, but a simulated reality that encompasses everything we perceive. Just like in the game, everything around us has been programmed to behave in certain ways. The laws of physics, the orbit of the planets, the cycle of life and death, all of these could be the result of a cosmic code, a grand design. And who's in control of this simulation? Well, that's a question we will revisit shortly, but for now, let's focus on this idea of us living in a designed reality. We perceive our world as real because our senses tell us so. We see the sun rise and set. We feel the wind on our skin. We taste the sweetness of a ripe strawberry. But what if all these experiences are simply data being fed to our consciousness? What if the reality we perceive is just a sophisticated virtual reality, no different from the immersive world of a video game? Even our own bodies could be part of the simulation. Our thoughts, our emotions, our memories, all could be products of this cosmic code. We could be characters in this grand game, not unlike the characters in a video game. We follow our life storyline, interact with other characters, navigate the trials and triumphs of our lives, all within the confines of this simulated reality. The simulation hypothesis doesn't just suggest that our world might not be real, but that we might not be real, at least not in the way we traditionally understand reality. But don't let this unsettle you. 
After all, even if we are living in a simulation, it doesn't change the fact that we experience, we feel, we live. In essence, we could be characters in a cosmic video game without even realizing it. Who would create such a simulation and why? Imagine an advanced civilization, not of humans, but of entities so evolved and sophisticated that they make our greatest minds look like toddlers in comparison. Entities that have conquered the mysteries of the universe, mastered the art of creation and destruction, and have eternity at their fingertips. These could be the architects of our simulated reality. These entities, if they do exist, could have various reasons for creating a simulated universe like ours. One possibility is experimentation. Just as we conduct experiments to understand our world, these entities might create simulations to study the intricacies of their own universe. They might create countless simulations, each with different laws of physics, to see how different universes would evolve. Another possibility is entertainment. In the same way we play video games or watch movies, these entities might create simulations for their amusement. They might revel in the drama and unpredictability of life, the rise and fall of civilizations, the dreams and despair of countless simulated beings. But what if the creators are not advanced entities, but artificial intelligences? AI that have evolved to a point where they can create their own universe, their own reality. They might create simulations to understand their creators or perhaps to escape their own reality. Imagine for a moment an AI so advanced that it has transcended its own programming, achieving a level of consciousness and self-awareness beyond our understanding. It could create a simulation to explore the nature of consciousness itself, to understand what it means to be alive. These are all speculative scenarios, of course. We don't know who or what could be behind our reality. If it is indeed a simulation, we're like characters in a video game, trying to understand the player. The truth could be far stranger than anything we can imagine. But one thing is certain, if we are living in a simulation, then our reality, our universe, everything we see and experience is the creation of something or someone far beyond our comprehension. We might just be the playthings of entities beyond our comprehension. Is there any evidence that we're living in a simulation? That's the question we're tackling in this segment. Let's delve into the arguments and theories that suggest we might just be characters in an elaborate cosmic play. First off, we have the argument from philosopher Nick Bostrom, who popularized the simulation hypothesis. He proposed that if a civilization ever reached a post-human stage and had immense computational power, it would likely run simulations of its ancestors. Given the astronomical number of possible simulations, it's more probable that we're in one of these simulated realities rather than the original universe. Next, we have the concept of quantum indeterminacy. Simply put, it's the idea that particles exist in multiple states until they're observed. It's like how a video game doesn't render parts of a map until the player moves there. This could be an efficient coding strategy employed by our supposed simulators. Then there's the idea of the Planck length, the smallest possible unit in the universe. It's essentially the pixel size of the universe. If the universe was a continuous flow of matter and energy, why would there be a limit to how small things can get? This pixelation of the universe could be a sign of a simulated reality. The simulation hypothesis also finds support in the field of quantum mechanics. The weird and counterintuitive behaviors of particles at the quantum level could be bugs or quirks in the simulation's programming. Moreover, the concept of cosmic rays also supports this hypothesis. These high energy particles always hit Earth with a maximum energy level. Above this cutoff point, cosmic rays are never observed, which is strangely reminiscent of a computer system with a maximum limit. Then there's the argument of information. Everything in the universe can be broken down into information, matter, energy, everything. And where else do we see this characteristic? In computer code. The universe could be an elaborate algorithm with laws of physics as its operating instructions. Lastly, we have the anthropic principle. It suggests that the universe seems suspiciously fine-tuned for life. The fundamental constants of physics are set just right to allow for galaxies, stars, planets, and life to exist. Could this be the work of a simulator setting the parameters for their cosmic game? All these theories and arguments might not provide concrete evidence, but they do hint at a possibility. They challenge our understanding of the universe and our place in it. They make us question the nature of reality itself. 
While not concrete, these theories and arguments do make you wonder. Scene script. Of course, not everyone is convinced we're living in a simulation. The simulation hypothesis, while fascinating, is not without its detractors. Many scientists, philosophers, and skeptics assert various counter-arguments that challenge its validity. One of the crucial scientific theories against the simulation hypothesis is the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. This principle from quantum mechanics states that it is impossible to simultaneously accurately measure the exact position and momentum of a particle. This inherent uncertainty would make a simulation of the universe at a granular level incredibly complex, if not impossible. Another argument against the simulation hypothesis is the sheer computational power required. To simulate a universe with the same level of detail as our perceived reality would need a computer of astronomical proportions. The energy resources and technology required for such a feat are currently beyond our comprehension and capabilities. Philosophically, critics argue that the simulation hypothesis is an example of solipsism. The idea that only one's mind is sure to exist. If we were in a simulation, we could never truly interact with another conscious being, only with their simulated counterparts. This perspective challenges our fundamental understanding of reality and relationships, and many find it philosophically untenable. Moreover, the simulation hypothesis is often criticized for its lack of falsifiability. A hypothesis is only scientific if it can be proven false through experiments or observations. However, the simulation hypothesis doesn't offer any concrete, testable predictions. It's a tantalizing idea, but without the ability to test it, it remains firmly in the realm of philosophy rather than science. On a similar note, the anthropic principle suggests that our observations of the universe are influenced by the requirement for the formation of conscious, observing beings. In other words, we perceive the universe as it is because we exist. This principle counters the idea of a simulated universe created for us, suggesting instead that our existence shapes our perception of reality. Lastly, Occam's razor, a problem-solving principle, states that the simplest solution is usually the right one. The simulation hypothesis, with its vast assumptions about advanced civilizations and technological capabilities, is far from the simplest explanation for our reality. However, it's important to remember that these counter-arguments do not definitively disprove the simulation hypothesis. They merely highlight the challenges and complexities inherent in such an extraordinary claim. As with all scientific and philosophical theories, the simulation hypothesis is subject to ongoing debate, scrutiny, and evolution. Like any theory, the simulation hypothesis has its skeptics. What if the simulation hypothesis is true? What does that mean for us? Imagine for a moment that the hypothesis is indeed accurate. Our reality as we know it is nothing more than an advanced computer simulation, a digital construct created by a higher intelligence. This concept, while mind-bending, could fundamentally alter our perception of reality, existence, and our place in the universe. Firstly, it would mean that our understanding of physical laws could be incomplete or outright false. Gravity, electromagnetism, even time itself could be mere lines of code in the grand cosmic program. The laws we consider universal might be merely local to our simulation. Secondly, it could change our perception of existence. We tend to view life as a biological process, but if we are living in a simulation, then life could be a digital process. We might not be biological beings at all, but digital entities, sophisticated algorithms interacting with each other within a vast computational framework. Thirdly, it would challenge our sense of free will. If our actions are predetermined by the code of the simulation, then do we truly have free will? Or are we merely following a script written by our unseen programmers? Fourthly, it could redefine our understanding of death. If we are digital entities, then perhaps death is not the end, but merely a transition. We might be reprogrammed, rebooted, or even uploaded into a new simulation. Finally, it could change our perception of the universe and our place within it. We tend to see ourselves as insignificant specks in a vast cosmos. But if we are part of a simulation, then we might be more central to the universe than we ever imagined. We might indeed be the purpose of the universe, the reason for its existence. The simulation hypothesis, while unsettling, is a fascinating concept that could change everything we know about reality. It's a hypothesis that invites us to question, to explore, and to dream of possibilities beyond our current understanding. Our very understanding of existence itself might be up for debate. 
So how does one live knowing they might be in a simulation? It's a question that has been echoing in the minds of many ever since the simulation hypothesis gained traction. The idea that our world might not be real but a complex digital construct can be unsettling to say the least. But it also opens up new avenues for philosophical and psychological exploration. Imagine for a moment that we're all characters in an intricate video game, the players of which are beings of a higher dimension. Does it change the way we perceive our existence? Does it alter our sense of morality and purpose? It's plausible to think that it might. In a simulated reality, traditional moral and ethical boundaries could blur. If life is just a digital construct, then concepts like life and death, right and wrong, might lose their gravity. But on the flip side, it could also make us reevaluate these concepts in a different light. If we are part of a grand simulation, aren't we in a way also part of something much bigger and grander than our individual selves? The simulation hypothesis could also influence our attitude towards life. It could inspire a sense of liberation, a feeling of being unshackled from the constraints of physical reality. It might encourage us to explore, to experiment, to push the boundaries of what we believe is possible. After all, if we're living in a simulation, then aren't the rules of the game meant to be tested and pushed? And what about our relationship with the universe? If we're living in a simulated world, then our universe is not a vast expanse of space and time, but a set of complex algorithms and digital codes. It could make us question our place in the cosmos and perhaps make us feel more connected to it. But at the end of the day, the simulation hypothesis is just that, a hypothesis. Until we have definitive proof, we can only speculate about its implications. But one thing is for sure, whether real or simulated, our perceptions shape our reality. What's next for the simulation hypothesis? That's the question on everyone's lips. As we delve deeper into the 21st century, the simulation hypothesis continues to evolve, and with it, our understanding of reality. Ongoing research is pushing the boundaries of what we thought we knew. Some scientists are exploring the concept of quantum computing as a potential cornerstone for a simulated universe. Imagine a computer so powerful it could simulate every single particle in the universe. This is not science fiction. Quantum computing is real and it's happening right now. If these scientists succeed, it could be a game changer for the simulation hypothesis. But it's not just about quantum computing. Other researchers are studying the nature of reality itself. They're asking tough questions. Is reality continuous or discrete? Does it behave more like a flowing river or a string of digital code? The answers to these questions could provide us with the clues we need to confirm or refute the simulation hypothesis. Let's talk about potential breakthroughs. One of the biggest challenges we face is finding definitive proof. We need a smoking gun, so to speak. Some propose that we might find this in the form of limitations or glitches in our universe. Think about it. Every computer program has its limitations. If our universe is a simulation, it should have limitations too. Discovering these could provide us with the solid evidence we need. The simulation hypothesis also has the potential to shape our understanding of reality. If we are living in a simulation, it challenges our perception of free will, consciousness, and even the nature of existence itself. It could force us to rethink everything we thought we knew. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. The simulation hypothesis is just that, a hypothesis. It's an idea, a possibility. It's not proven fact. We need to approach it with an open mind, but also with a healthy dose of skepticism. After all, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. So where do we go from here? The future of the simulation hypothesis is as uncertain as it is exhilarating. We are on the cusp of potentially groundbreaking discoveries. The next few decades could revolutionize our understanding of the universe and our place within it. But let's not forget, it's not just about proving or disproving the simulation hypothesis. It's about the journey of discovery. It's about asking questions, pushing boundaries, and exploring the unknown. It's about the relentless pursuit of knowledge and the insatiable curiosity that drives us as a species. As we continue to unravel the mysteries of the universe, who knows what we might discover? Indeed, the future of the simulation hypothesis is an exciting one filled with endless possibilities and countless mysteries waiting to be unraveled. Only time will tell what secrets the universe has in store for us.